Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be talking about the Time Wound Bed Preparation Assessment Tool. But first, if you could please hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated. So let's get started. So wound bed preparation has become the gold standard model for proper wound assessment. So it allows us to identify um, local barriers to wound healing. We have seen it over and over, the emphasis of standard of care, evidence-based practice and cost effectiveness in order to achieve positive outcomes in our patients. So the wound bed preparation model supports all of these aspects of care. Wound bed preparation is not only the basis for, successful, for success in treatment, but more importantly, to achieve faster, better results for our patients who are affected by wounds. So the principles of time. So to facilitate the wound bed preparation, a group of wound care experts developed the mnemonic time. The concept was created in 2002 and has been providing wound care clinicians the tools they need to promote wound bed preparation in a simpler way. Wound care can be difficult enough um, because there's so many different aspects and each wound is different, but this brings everything kind of together and makes it a little bit simpler for your wound bed preparation. So time, we're going to go over each individual um, letter and what it stands for and what we should be looking for. So the T in time stands for tissue. So is there non-viable tissue in the wound? If there is a presence of non viable tissue, necrosis, slough, or eschar, the next step would be to determine the best debridement method that we're going to use. But if all the tissue is viable, then we're going to choose a dressing that maintains optimal moisture um, to conduct wound, proper wound healing. Um, and if there's any dead space, so if, there's, if there is no slough or anything, um, the devitalized tissue. We want to focus on filling any dead space, undermining tunnels, which is very loose packed um, filling to prevent further complications or development of new barriers. So the I in time stands for infection and inflammation. So are there visible signs of infection? So using your nerds and stonies, um, if you're not sure what Nerds and Stonies is, check out the link below in the description and um, it goes over the, the Nerds and the Stonies and how to determine infection. Um, or does the wound appear angry? So in the presence of infection, either local or systematic, it does create barriers to healing. So an infected wound is not going to heal. You also want to look if there's presence of edema in either the wound bed or the peri wound. This also creates a barrier. So with infection, the host is overwhelmed by microorganisms that surpa surpass their stay. So infection goes through several stages um, to achieve total control of the host so um, and to cause systematic infections. So microorganisms, they tend to interact with chronic wounds at a different level. There is contamination, colonization, critical colonization, and ultimately infection. Okay, at the point where systematic antibodies, um, so when, when it actually gets to the infection, like the deep spreading infection, you need an antibiotic. Okay, so this will greatly um, help the wound. Um, and then wounds with edema. So you want to reduce the edema because if something is swelling, it's not going to heal. Um, so how do we manage that? So we have to see if we can use compression, um, how their circulation is. Um, is it a venous or arterial ulcer? We have to be very cautious when using compressions um, just because if we have arterial where the arterial disease where the blood isn't actually flowing to the limbs properly we wouldn't want to put compression because it's going to hold it and prevent it even more so from going to that limb um, 
And so once we have the right either compression or whatever we're using, we just need a dressing that provides a moist wound environment. So the M in time, so the M stands for moisture balance. Um, so does the wound appear too dry or too wet? So Dr. George Winters in the 1960s came to the conclusion that moisture balance is essential for a positive outcome in wound healing. Okay, so if a wound is too dry, we need to add moisture. And if it's too wet or the wound is macerated, we need to choose a dressing that is designed for a more moderate to heavy um, drainage. So moisture balance is quite important. We want a just moist wound. So the E in time, so the E stands for edge of the wound. So are the edges of the wounds non-advancing or have undermining? As we evaluate all aspects of local and systematic barriers, the wound edges is another critical point in wound management, okay? When we have a healthy wound edges um, and they appear attached, open, migrating, or contracting, this is good. But when we have wounds that are um, improperly dressed, um, this will cause tunneling, undermining, and other, um, and other barriers such as rolled edges. By properly filling any dead spaces, now we're when we fill dead spaces we just fluff it very very gently into there with either wound fillers packing strips or any other appropriate uh, products of choice then the edges will start migrating and contracting without any complications so we need to make sure that our time principles are being addressed um, for wound bed preparation and that our patients and faculties are in compliance and that we're supplying the correct tools for the patients and their family to be successful. Lastly, as we are practicing wound care, we should also be addressing comorbidities and local and systematic factors. So that's all I have for this video on the time management of wound bed preparation. I hope you did find it helpful. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, please leave it in the comments below and I will catch you in my next video guys. See ya.